Okay, welcome back to the Tommy Trials. Thomas here. I've been saying that I'm going to make this, and then for one reason or another, it just simply was not getting made. It wasn't at the tip top of my list, but the calls for a video like this have gotten larger and larger, so I'm going to try my very best to explain how to install the alternative mod launcher. At the very end of this video, we'll also discuss uh, verifying your game cache as well as um, deleting your config which are both things that I have advised people to do in the past but now it's gonna be all in one video so that you can kind of understand what we're doing I had a video like this in the past uh, but this one's gonna be a bit more in-depth hopefully uh, there will be less confusion as well please don't take anything that I say as offensive or like I'm t trying to talk down to you because that's not the intent but I am trying to give a complete guide as to how, uh, how how this is installed. So what it's called is the XCOM 2 Alternative Mod Launcher, or what I'm going to refer to as the AML moving forward. The main launcher for the game of XCOM 2, it doesn't work. Mods aren't turning on properly, and they're not turning off properly. And there used to be a bug before the launcher just plain old didn't work. There used to be a, uh, a, a bug that duplicated files. So over time... It would actually cause your game to run slower and not as well. So this overall is much better. If you want to use a mod, you check mark it. If you don't want to use a mod, you uncheck mark it. But the installation process is not incredibly complicated, not at all, but it's also not incredibly easy either. So we're going to talk about everything in detail. Now in the description of this video is going to be a link to this page, this exact link. Now you can also just go ahead and type this into your address bar if that's your thing I believe on the old video people made the mistake of clicking here or clicking elsewhere and getting incredibly confused just scroll down to the readme.md and there's gonna be all these things It's gonna talk about the features yada yada there's installation instructions so if you want to read you can but probably don't want to read because you're here uh, so you're gonna to wanna to click on the download latest stable release it's going to take you to this page uh, and you can click download or you can scroll all the way down to download the mod launcher dot zip now I do believe that there is some confusion as you can see I've already downloaded it so I'm not gonna click it again but if you click it well, let's click it again why not it will just instantly download we don't actually need that so we'll just leave it there I suppose um, as you can see it is a zip file and this is very important because I had so many people on the old version of this video hoot and holler at me and and call me less than stellar things because they said that I lied in the video and that it was incredibly misleading this is a zip file and if you know what a zip file is then I'm sorry that I'm, I'm rehashing it but it's a, a compressed file which means by default no there is no dot exe file there's no executable which is what an exe file is there, there's nothing it's just XCOM to alternative mod launcher dot zip so what you need I've got WinRAR but you need a file or a, uh, a program such as JZip, which you can find by Googling it. I'll have the link in the description, but you can just Google JZip. And then the first thing that comes up is going to be free file compression solution. And you just click get JZip. While you install it, make sure to unclick any kind of ads so that you don't uh, get files that you did not intentionally want. So that's something to be careful about. So just take your time. Make sure you don't skip any steps and you'll be fine. But what we need is a file, or a zip file uncompressor which I'm going to be using WinRAR so when you click on it it's going to tell me that I need things because I got the evaluation copy for the sake of this illustration um, but you can see there's all these files including a .exe file what you want to do is not just take the exe file or things won't work properly what you want to do is create a new file maybe on your desktop or someplace else and as you can see I've already got one xcom dot or xcom aml is what I've called it but you can call it whatever you want and then make sure you take all 17 files and plop them into there now you've got the alternative mod launcher the AML on your computer you don't need this anymore and you can get rid of JZip if you don't want it but when you open it up now I'm not gonna bother to do that because I've already got it on my computer but when you open it up it's actually going to be blank um, which is not what you're going to see on mine. You're going to see all these files. Those aren't going to be there, which can be very confusing and very disheartening when you've gone through the entire bother of getting that file and got it unzipped and you're so excited to get to start and then nothing's there. 
So what you're going to want to do is go to settings and go to edit because we need to set the base path and the mod directory. So where are we going to find the mods on your computer because all the mods are in files. Where are we going to find that and then where is your game located? The easiest and most simple way to find where your game is located is to pull it up on Steam, go over, over here to the manage or this gear icon and click on properties. That's going to pull up this window here. It's going to default to general. You want to go to local files, browse local files. That's going to pull up exactly where your game is located. And as you can see, this right here, it will not be the same on your computer. I've got several different drives. Uh, but it's usually something to the tune of typically like uh, program files in parentheses x86 yada yada and then eventually gets to steam apps and then common and xcom2 uh, but as long as you click on that browse local files you're going to find it so it's not going to be a really big deal that's what you want to put in whatever this defaults to that's your base path so as you can see that's what i've got my base path set as and when I hit Control V, which is the paste option, um, it's identical. The next thing that we want to do is figure out where your mod mods uh, are located, and that's pretty simple because it's going to be on the same file as wherever your game or the same drive, excuse me, is wherever your game is located. And then, but it, it's it's a little bit more complicated to find. So we know for a fact that my XCOM 2 game is installed on my SSD or my D drive here. And then I'm going to pull up Steam Games and Steam Apps. Now, that's going to be the same. Wherever your game is located, you're going to find Steam Apps. And then, of course, if I were to follow Common, we've already seen, that's going to take me to my base XCOM 2 folder. We don't need that. But we need to go to the Workshop. So if we click on Workshop and then Content, now because I'm on a SSD, the only mod file for Steam and its workshop is XCOM. But you could have this big long list and they're all numbered, which is incredibly unhelpful. But no matter how many you've got, XCOM is always 268500. So that's what you're going to look for. So no matter what this is, once you've pulled this up, and as you can see, there's a tons of numbers in here because every mod uh, has a workshop ID, and that's what these big old long numbers are, just for sake of, of uh, if you're curious. But this is where all of our mods are located. So we need to copy that. Control-C will do the same thing. Then we need to go back here, and I suggest opening up like an, a notepad or something to that effect and hitting uh, control uh, V which is paste and putting it there so you can have it over here on your screen because you've got to go to add there's no way to just default and force this in so you can follow the exact steps so I already know that mine is D steam game steam apps workshop content 268500 so I can follow that path so if I go to my SSD here and then we go to steam games because I'm just I'm following the path that I've already gone, workshop, content, 26500, and then I hit OK. Now, I don't need it in there twice, so I'm going to remove it, but that's how you do that. The other one that I always suggest is by going to the Steam game or Steam apps, common, XCOM 2, and then XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. That's not necessarily required. The big one that you need is this one. And then if you were to be using, for example, the Long War of the Chosen, which is not on the workshop yet, you've got to install it manually in, uh, by creating a mod folder. And I'm not going to explain that in this video because uh, we're already at nine minutes of me rambling on. But if you're going to have any manually installed mods, that's where you're going to want to do it. So at least the Steam apps, Common, XCOM 2, and on is going to be the same as, as, as yours. Just where exactly that Steam games and the D, that's what's different for mine. Now, I put on the arguments, review, no red screens, and allow console so that I can use the console commands. That's not necessary, but it's something that you can do. There is something else very cool with this mod launcher that you can do, and it's called profiles. So, obviously, you can categorize your mods. So, if you wanted to categorize armor and, and, and enemy overhauls and things like that. You can do that just by right clicking and then moving to a category. It's entirely possible. You can show it in an explorer, which is your file explorer, show it in, show it, show it in Steam. 
Oh, you can show it in the browser. You can also force it to update if it needs an update. So there's some really, 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 really nice things. If you've got a uh, conflict, so two mods that conflict and they're both on, you'll get this big old overrides and it'll have a red uh, exclamation point beside it, which lets you know, hey, a mod that I'm using is conflicting, which is extremely beneficial as well. Beyond that is profile. So right now I've got a series of clone mods on, I believe. Yeah, I've got a series of uh, my uh, season three of the Clone Wars series that's going on right now, um, which you can find. I'll have a link to it at the end of this video. But I've got a profile for that. So let's say I wanted to do a run through with the clones, and I want to do a run through with uh, Warhammer 40k Space Marines, and a run through of Halo. Let's just use those three. For the clones, I just do save. Now, I've, I've already got it, so I don't need to save it again. But I can name it whatever I want and then save it, and it will save all of those mods. So now, if I want to load up and do my Space Marines, which I think it's, it's this one, uh, and open this, it'll say Adopt Profile, and it will turn on the 174 mods that I'm using in that series. Just a fun little side note of, of things that you can do. It's extremely helpful as well. You can always copy this. But it tells you the ID and its official name, what its file name is called. It's a very, very, very nice mod launcher, in my opinion. And as far as I'm aware, the newer versions have even more options. But once everything is put in correctly, you'll have three options. Run XCOM 2, that's vanilla XCOM 2. Run War of the Chosen, that's the expansion. And run Challenge Mode, which is the expansion with no mods turned on so that you can do the uh, challenge mode on the on the game if that's something that tickles your fancy for lack of a better term so that in a nutshell is how you install the alternative mod launcher not complicated but i tried my very best to explain it in as great a detail as i can now something else that you may have modder suggest and i may very well suggest it on my discord server and while I'm on that topic, if you're having issues with this, go ahead and head over to the Discord server. And there are people, including myself, who would be more than willing to help you figure it out. But on occasion, we'll say verify your game cache and delete your config or your configuration. And I'm going to explain to you what we mean by both of those. So to verify your game cache, we're going to go back to that gear and back to properties and uh, back to local files. Verify integrity of game files. And what's that? what that's going to do is it's going to go through and make sure that all your files are good to go. If it finds any that are corrupted or they're not correct, because mods can do that, it will reset them. That's extremely helpful and something that I suggest doing from time to time. The other thing that I may tell you to do is delete your config or delete your configuration. What you're going to want to do for that is actually go to desktop not desktop documents <laughs> hey I'm awake so you're gonna to want to go to documents and scroll all the way down to my games in my games you'll find XCOM 2 War of the Chosen XCOM game config and you're gonna click the top one scroll all the way down to the bottom hold the shift key <coughs> pardon me and click the bottom one right click and delete it shouldn't take but a second and then what you're gonna to want to do is turn all of your mods off. So this is when profiles are going to become extremely handy here because you're going to want to turn all of your mods off so that you can start the game with zero mods on. So you have to start the game with zero mods on so that it can properly reset your configuration to the defaults. Then, once you get to the main menu, exit out of the game, turn the mods on that you want, relaunch the game. A lot of times, if there's a conflict or a mod got updated but it just didn't take, there's all kinds of different and various issues that you can find yourself with. Um, that's going to help a lot of them. Between those two, it's going to help. And using the alternative mod launcher is also going to help you find any conflicts. So hopefully, again, this was 15 minutes. I think the last one was 8. So <laughs> hopefully this, is, this makes a whole lot more sense. If you've got questions or something's not working, if we can uh, ask them kindly before jumping to a conclusion that I'm lying or something like that, I would extremely appreciate that. And then if, if you need help, I will do everything I can to kind of help with that as best that I can. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, liking the video, even letting me know in the comments, hey, this was extremely helpful. That's just really nice to know that the tutorial that I've made was actually beneficial and not annoying. Um, and then if you want to see more content like this, 
more XCOM content, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I hope that you have a great day.